North Korean troops disguised as Bariats and Yakuts have been sent to help Russia retake the Kursk region, which has been partly held by Ukrainian forces since August, according to video footage released by South Korea's intelligence service, the Financial Times reports. Ukrainian analysts say the force is likely too small to turn the tide of the war, with Russia needing to double its 50,000 troops in the Kursk region to dislodge the Ukrainian military and launch a new wave of mobilization to make gains along the front lines in Ukraine. At the same time, Jack Waddling, a senior research fellow in land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute in the UK, believes that North Korea's ability to help Russia replenish its troops could create even more difficulties for Ukraine. They may have good enough cohesion. They may have enough morale. They may be able to operate on the scale that the Russians are trying to achieve. That's a low enough bar to be better than the Russians are now, the expert emphasized. The Financial Times noted that North Korean troops are reinforcing the Russian army at a time when Russia is trying to increase its forces due to huge losses in Ukraine. According to Western officials, they amount to more than 600,000 killed and wounded. Western intelligence also has information that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has not heeded requests from his top leadership to order a new wave of mobilization. Waddling noted that while Russia may face command and control issues with North Korean forces, its experience of operating with Iranian-backed forces and militias in the Syrian civil war will give Moscow's commanders a clear model to draw on. In turn, the National Intelligence Service of South Korea reports that the troops being sent to Russia belong to the 11th Army of the North Korea, an elite unit called the Storm Corps. These are not ordinary North Korean soldiers, most of whom have never had proper combat training. They are well-equipped, highly trained mobile light infantry, said Go Myung Hyun, a senior researcher at the South Korean state-run Institute for National Security Strategy in Seoul. At the same time, the Financial Times emphasizes that the North Korean troops will arrive at a time when Russia has pushed back the Ukrainian defense forces in the Kursk region, reducing the territory it holds to 600 to 700 square km in October from about 1,000 square km at the end of August. Waddling also added that Russia's goal is to put Ukraine in a situation where holding the entire front line would be impossible, since the occupiers would be putting pressure on the Ukrainian military at several different points along the front line at once. Ukraine constantly pays for the maintenance of this territory in the Kursk region, he said. South Korea's President Yoon suk Yeol said Thursday that his government could review the possibility of sending lethal weapons to Ukraine, depending on North Korean troops' activities, in Russia. The statement came during the joint press conference with Poland's President Andrzej Duda, who agreed to bolster their joint response to North Korea's troop dispatch to Russia during Thursday's summit. South Korea, as principal, has not supplied lethal weapons to Ukraine. The meeting between Yoon and Duda came a day after U.S. and South Korean officials said they believe around 3,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia and are training at several locations. South Korea's spy agency told lawmakers that North Korea likely aims to send a total of 10,000 troops to Russia by the end of the year. Both Moscow and Pyongyang have denied the presence of North Korean troops. あ、우리 두 정상은 북한의 핵 미사일 개발과 도발 그리고 러시아와의 불법 군사 협력을 강력한 어조로 규탄했습니다. 특히 유엔 헌장과 안보리 결의를 정면으로 위반하는 북한의 러시아 파병은 한반도와 유럽을 넘어 전 세계의 안보를 위협하는 도발이라는 점에 
의견을 같이 했습니다.